Okay, welcome everybody. And let's go ahead and get started on this lesson. Okay, we're going to talk about box and whisker plots. They're also called box plots or um, box, yeah, box graphs or box plots. A lot of times you hear box plot. So box and whisker plots. Here's my little fancy animation. Oh, there we go. Box and whiskers. Not quite, doesn't quite look like that, but actually not too far. Okay, so let's go ahead and just jump right into an example here. And what I'm going to do is just kind of walk you guys through how to turn this, this data, all these numbers, these raw figures, into a box and whisker plot. Now, a box and whisker plot is just another kind of um, visual device used to represent data, just like a bar graph or a line graph or a pie chart. Uh, box and whisker plot really is no different. It's just a visual way of just kind of looking at the data and see where everything is. So here's some, here's some numbers here. It, all these numbers are about uh, number of minutes you can hold your breath. You may want to pause the video, write down those numbers, write down the steps, and then unpause the video when you're ready to move on. So um, just like yesterday, box and whisker plots rely heavily on um, knowing how to do the median. So if median was something that was tough for you, make sure you look into uh, how to do it. Ask questions or um, look over your notes again and review what median is. Because median, a lot of the box and whisker information relies on the median. So let me just go back a second there. So I put them in order and then um, what I'm going to do is just find the middle and you know six and seven are in the middle so there in this instance there isn't just one middle so we can't say the median is six and seven we have to say the median is six point five okay so I'm gonna kinda go through this you guys can always pause and um, you know go back if you are confused with anything so remember if there's two numbers in the middle average out those two numbers. So add them up. 6 plus 7 is 13 and then divide by 2. So 6 plus 7 is 13. Even when you divide 13 by 2 you get 6.5. So the median, there you go. There's, there's an important number. So you, what you might want to do is when you're doing these um, when you're doing these box and whisker plots, you're going to want to keep track, of, keep track of a few things. So write down, you know, median equals 6.5. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out these things called quartiles. Now quartiles has um, has quartz in it, you know, C U or Q U A R T, you know, meaning four. You know, quarter is a f you know one fourth of a dollar, and a quart is one fourth of a gallon. So um, a quartile is basically a fourth of the data. So we're going to break it up into force. That's what's going to happen here. So we're going we're to take all the data. If, this d if the data represents this rectangle, we're going to break it up into halves, and then we're going to take the halves and split those into half. So now you have fourths, OK? One-fourth of the data. Two-fourths, which is half the data, really. Three-fourths. And then all the data is four-fourths. So that's how that works, OK? So then what you want to do is you want to split the numbers on the left and the right of the median. Now the median was 6.5. So draw a line through the middle of the data. 6.5 was where the middle of the data was. And now what you're going to do is you're going to find the median of both sets. So now what we're going we're to look for the median down here, okay, of this half, see? And we're going to find the median of this half, which is 10, right there. So there you have it. Okay, I'm kind of skipping around a little bit here, but you'll see what happens when we're all done here, because it, it may seem kind of like, okay, what am I really doing here? And when we start really making our graph, um, you'll see what all this means. So now we've already talked about what the median of each half was. Okay, so basically now we have, it's kind of weird, but we have three medians so to speak. We have a median that's in the, in the middle of the entire set of data, and we have a median that is in the middle of 
the two halves of the data. So, you know, you have three medians here. It's kind of weird. We have three middles. We have the middle of the entire set and the middle of this half and the middle of this half. So that's what you want to do when you're doing a box and whisker plot. Okay? All right. So the left median was four and the right median was ten. We're, we're just going to call them left and right medians for right now, but they have more specific names that we'll talk about later. Okay, so the left median, what we call that is the lower quartile. You may see, you may see that um, referred to as LQ, okay? So the lower quartile. And the other side of the data, you know, the other median, what do you think that's called? So if, the, if this lower part of the data was called the lower quartile, what do you think the, the, the right median is going to be called? That is correct. It is upper quartile. So U, Q. Okay, so you have your LQ and your upper quartile, U, Q. Okay? So those are the official names. So you have, now we've talked about three things so far. We have the median, the entire thing. We have the lower quartile. And we have the upper quartile. Okay? So we have pretty much the most important parts already done so far. So now let's get to graphing it. So draw a number line from the smallest to the largest without skipping any numbers. Okay, so you may have to, you know, sometimes depending on the data, you may have to be a little bit creative with how you set up your number line. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the numbers in there. My data spans from uh, the lowest number being 1 and my highest number being 14. That's what you want to do. But like I said, if the, if the lowest number is 1 and the highest number is like 60 or something like that, you're probably not going to want to write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to 60. So maybe you want to go by 5s, you know, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, or go by 10s, 10, 20, 30, 40. So depending on what the data is, you're going to want to um, play around with how you spread it out. Okay, in this instance, I'm only dealing with units of 1. So... Uh, and we're only going up to 14, so it's not a big deal. Okay, so now let's start graphing our data. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to indicate where our lower quartile and upper quartiles are. And we already determined that the lower quartile was 4, and the upper quartile was 10. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a box. This may be kind of confusing to you, but you know this is going to be your box. So you're going to draw a box um, that spans from the lower quartile to the upper quartile. So it's basically a rectangle, but you're going to just draw a box that goes around those numbers. Okay, not a circle, but just draw a box. And then what we need to do is we need to indicate where the median was. Now that median we we determine at the first step. That was one of the first things we did. So um, don't forget that median, because that median tells us something. It tells us what? That is correct. It tells us where the median, where the middle of the data is. It, you know, we want to know where the middle is. It's not the middle of this box. If you notice, that, that's not the middle of the box. It's just the middle of the data. All right? So now we have three things so far in there. We have, we have the uh, lower quartile, LQ. We have the upper quartile, UQ. And we have the median. Okay, so we have that in there. Now there's a couple more things we need and we're basically done. So now this is called a box and whisker plot. So we have our box. So now what we have left are the whiskers. All we have to do is add the whiskers. So the whiskers are made up of the lowest number and the highest number. So the lowest number, which is called the minimum or the min, and the highest number, 14, that's called the maximum. So the minimum and the maximum. You may see those written as just min and max. Sounds like a superhero duo or something, but minimum and maximum. Okay? So min and max. 
and those will represent the ends of the whiskers. There you go. So there you have it. There, basically, we're done with our box and whisker plot. And, you know, everything's in there. We have our minimum. Okay, we have our maximum. Min and max. We have our median. We have our upper quartile. And we have our lower quartile. Okay, there's also another thing here you may want to write down in your notes. Well, not may, I do want you to write this in your notes. This is called your MQR. That's called your MQR. Now, your MQR is your mid quartile range. So it basically just represents like the middle of the data. Mid quartile range. So we're done. We're done with the box and whisker plot. Now, even though we're done, I want to just kind of talk about for a little bit here um, what all this means. Okay, now let's now let's step back from the data and actually look at what this is all about. So what we have um, oh, you know what? Another thing I want to talk about here is I forgot is that you know the one I was drawing at first I was drawing it right on the number line. You know you may see box and whisker plots drawn differently. You may see them drawn above the number line or below the number line. Really doesn't matter. Okay? So now let's look at our plot, like I was saying earlier. So that represents the median. What do those represent? What are those called? Those are called quartiles, right? Those are the upper and lower quartiles. What are those called? The minimum and maximum values, the highest number and the lowest number. That tells us basically how spread or what's the range of our data. What, what's the lowest point the data gets to and what's the highest value it gets to. That's important to know. You know, you, you may think, you know, the lowest number and the highest number are not really important to, um, st you know, statistics or to the, you know, to scientists or whoever's, rep you know, looking at the data. But this is important. So let's talk about what those groups represent. So those are called quartiles. Now if you notice, they're all, they're, they're split into fourths. Now they're not equal fourths, I, I would say, you know, um, this, this doesn't represent, you know, a, exactly a fourth of this. I'm just saying we have split our data, our data groups into quartiles. And a quartile, remember, means a fourth. So we have four groups. You know, we have this part, that's the lower fourth. We have this we have this group, which is the upper fourth, and then we have right here, the mid quartile range. And so you want to just kind of move on here. Just look at this here. You know, basically what we're saying here is twenty five percent, the top twenty five percent of the people you um, surveyed could hold their breath for uh, anywhere between 10 to 14 minutes. Okay, the highest being 14 minutes, and the lower part of that is 10. So the 25%, a fourth of the people could hold their breath for anywhere between 10 to 14 minutes. Okay, right here, the bottom 25% could only hold their breath for one, two, or three minutes. Or four, I should say, as well. So that represents a fourth. The top half could hold their breath for six and a half minutes all the way up to 14 minutes. Six and a half. We get six and a half because that's our median. And the lower half of our, oops, I'm going backwards, sorry. The bottom half of our mid quartile range means that they could hold their breath from um, anywhere between one to 6.5 minutes. There we go. So that does it for box and whisker plots. And uh, remember, there, it's really important that you know how to find median. Median's really important. So uh, look over your notes if you forgot what median was all about. And make sure you write a small paragraph summarizing, when you're done, summarizing what you just learned. Try to use your own words. And just, just you know, reach down into your brain and just really think about what you learned and, 
And uh, if you have any questions, write those down as well. Okay, everybody, that does it. Everyone have a good night. I'll see everyone tomorrow. Take care.